Last week, I was over at Blizzard headquarters and I got to test out the new Tempest class inside of the game and check out the new Paragon system inside of Diablo Mortal coming in an update very, very soon. In this video today, I'm gonna be showing you gameplay of the Tempest, talking about my experience, talking about the skills and sharing with you the Paragon system. Not to mention, I'm gonna be going live in just a few hours where you are gonna be able to follow me and look at everything that I saw regarding the Tempest class. Let's dive into this video and remember guys, if you find value in it, if you enjoy it, or if you want to just know everything about Diablo Mortal first, make sure you subscribe to this channel right here. So what we're looking at right here is the Tempest class. A quick overview of the class in action, the skills, the battle mechanics, and what it actually looks like. This was the beginning of my play session when I was kind of getting used to the character class and seeing how it really played. Now I'm gonna give you the details on what this is all about, but I wanted to give you just a brief quick look on the inside before we dove into any bigger, greater, more in-depth details. But overall impression, very fun and quite different from other classes we have right now. So let's start out with a spotlight of the Tempest. What is this class actually about and what are the fundamentals based on regarding this class? And also notice the Paragon level here is 299, confirming that the Paragon levels will be lowered as we get into this update. I have some notes here that I'm gonna share with you guys that give you some in-depth looks into the class. After that, I'll give you guys an in-depth look at all of the skills so you could see what type of potential possibilities you have playing as the Tempest. The tides have turned in Sanctuary as Tempest makes their debut as the eighth playable class in Diablo Immortal. On May 23rd, players can try their hand as the Tempest available for free to everyone. So let's actually spotlight the Tempest a little bit here. Sculpted by the storm, the Tempests are warrior priests who have mastered controlling wind and water. They are defined by their high mobility and their ability to summon Zephyrs. These Zephyrs are not a skill. They are part of the class itself, and no matter what skills you have equipped, you will be able to summon these Zephyrs, which are these water creatures that fight beside you. They're a mix of melee and ranged attacks. Tempest can have rich lore, cast off a storm iron colony of exiles. The devout community is much like the lands themselves, shaped by wind and waves to be powerful guardians of sanctuary. And as you're noticing right here, just from watching a little bit, the class is very much featured with wind and water. And as you see, there are two blades held by the Tempest and the ranged portion of that attack allows those blades to hang on to your character with strands of water able to then pull them back in and fight in combat. So what are these Zephyr summons? It's a passive skill unique to the Tempest which will summon projected Zephyrs to fight alongside of you. The minions mirror the class's abilities and unlike other minion based classes like Necrods and Druids, Tempest's summons do not persist in the world until they're killed. These minions mirror the class's abilities and unlike other minion based classes like Necrods and Druids, the Tempest summons do not persist in the world until they are killed. I like this. These projections act on a cooldown offering more versatility for the movement based Tempest class. A lot of what you're going to be witnessing throughout this video is focused on the movement of the class and how well it plays, which is similar-esque to the gameplay of the monk. Now let's talk about some elemental skills. The Tempest is a dynamic, highly mobile class that utilizes a combination of quick melee attacks, ranged knife-tipped water whips, AoE attacks, and their projected Zephyrs, as we just spoke of a moment ago. We have Wave's Edge, which is a primary attack that sweeps enemies with Water Whip, dealing damage in front range. We have Mist Touched, a passive skill unique to the Tempest. Every eight seconds, your next attack summons a Zephyr to fight. We have Power of the Deeps, an ultimate skill that engages enhanced Water Whips for 12 seconds with 
continuous vertical slashes. The final blow will create two temporary Zephyr summons on your side that attack alongside of you. Now we also do have major changes to the Paragon system, which we're gonna look at a little bit. But first, I wanna show you guys actually from the game itself, the new skills. Now, as you can see, the Tempest is pretty sweet looking and looks even sweeter once you throw on some of the cosmetics, a pretty nasty looking class, if you ask me. I actually really like the way this class looks. And as you could tell, I played as a female, which is actually the first time I played as a female character inside of Diablo Immortal. But like I mentioned, let's take a look at some of those skills, starting off with this one right here, which is called Riptide. Release your edges to command the water around you in a crushing tide that pulls in nearby enemies, dealing 84 damage and stunning them for two seconds. Keep in mind, all of these can be changed based off of the essences that you utilize. Next, we have Fog Step. Create an area of wind that lasts for 3.5 seconds, prevents you from being picked out, and increases your attack speed by 20%. Now, this one right here, preventing you from being picked out, essentially means preventing from you being targeted. Rolling Surf, empower yourself with the C for six seconds, causing your and your Zephyr's primary attacks to hurl water blades that penetrate enemies dealing 93 damage. Additionally, your movement speed is increased by 35%. Additionally, your movement speed is increased by 35% and you ride a wave allowing you to primary attack while you're riding. That reminded me very much of the Crusader and I talked about this in the skill breakdown video. When you're riding this wave, you could do your primary attack and you can use other skills while riding the wave without being knocked off as well as your ultimate which is something very new. Squall allows you to call on the power of the wind to teleport you and your Zephyrs to a targeted location, unleashing a whirl of attacks dealing 594 damage. Now, the, uh, the damage numbers seem very small here. They seem very low. I'm not 100% sure why. I'm wondering if it's a dev build thing or if that's just how it really is. We'll have to dive a little bit deeper into that later. Storm Fury, imbue the edges of your weapons of nearby allies for nine seconds, causing your primary attacks to unleash slashes of wind, dealing an additional 40% damage. Tidal Rush, you and the targeted Zephyrs dash at each other's current location, slicing through enemies in your wake, dealing 56 damage, and you have three charges. Vortex, conjure a vortex that pulls in nearby enemies, dealing 360 damage over six seconds. Zephyr Surge, dissipate into the air, becoming untargetable and unleashing a fury of five slashes on nearby enemies, dealing 54 damage with each hit and the final strike dealing 65 damage. Zephyr Surge also consumes all of your Zephyrs, empowering the attack with two. This is an amazing skill. It's one of my favorite from the class and one that you'll see throughout the gameplay quite a bit inside of this video. Flowing Strike, conjure a Zephyr at your current location as you dash forward in a flurry of blades and water dealing 298 damage to all enemies in your path. Crosswinds, you and your Zephyrs unleash a gust of wind at a targeted location dealing 545 damage. Cascade, you and your Zephyrs slam your edges into the ground unleashing a crushing wave around you dealing 459 damage to enemies within that area. Breaker, flourish your blade's edges unleashing a wave that crashes over your enemies dealing 583 damage as the wave crashes into the ground it conjures a Zephyr. And as you can see, Mist Touched is the passive skill. That's gonna be the Zephyrs that are able to be spawned by you. And you have two primary attacks, Wave Edge and Wind Edge. Wave Edge seemed to be a much more range style attack, while Wind Edge was something that brought you much closer into combat and seemed to be better in some instances. I preferred Wind Edge in PVP type battles and Wave Edge in open world farming and events like that type battles. Now, as I mentioned, I'm going to be live streaming all of this for you in just a few hours. So make sure you guys come back, throw a notification on so you don't miss out on the stream so you can really see this in full in action. I will show you literally everything that I got to see. But as you can see, a bunch of us here that were at this event that were really getting to get this first look at the Tempest, we're here doing a little bit of Heliquare together to see how these battles would go. And you can get a good look at all of our character classes. Notice that they are getting pretty close in there on the action. This is not as much of a ranged class, although considered a ranged class that you would expect. 
Gotta go do a bunch of healing. Well, I believe we're wearing some Mount Bank. I forget what set pieces I was wearing at this point in time, but it was a lot of fun. It was definitely not sit back like a wizard or a demon hunter and do damage, but more like you're gonna get pulled into the action with your attacks while you're playing. It's definitely going to be a high skill class to play. This is not something that I typically play like a Crusader or a Barbarian where you just tank yourself up, get really strong, and then just dive through the battles and eat damage and don't get hurt. You're gonna need to take that skill gap, close that up, and make sure that you really learn how to perfect this class so that you could be effective while you play. Now let's talk about this Paragon System rework. As you can see, things look very, very different and they function very differently as well. Notice as I upgrade and unlock these different nodes, I'm gaining attribute bonuses. These attribute bonus gains are standard across any of the Paragon trees that you're doing. There's no picking and choosing what you want. Essentially, when you activate a tree in full, you're gonna get all of the attribute bonuses, which are gonna be the same no matter what tree you're using. But on the left-hand side, you'll notice that there are a bunch of open slots where you can pick and choose what Paragon tree elements are being used. Notice that you can choose five on the left-hand side that are all from one tree, and then you can have one bonus special slot which needs to be unlocked as your sixth, which can be from a different Paragon tree. So all of the skills that you're choosing here or all of the Paragon tree uh, bonuses have to be of the same tree on the left-hand side to be chosen and actually activated with one that's available for you to use from a separate tree. Players will retain all progress made on the Paragon system so far, and they can now choose a combination of 15 skills per Paragon tree, with the number of trees consolidated from 15 down to five. So now we're gonna have five Paragon trees. Players will now have more choice when they enter to mix and match skills, rather than to be stuck with five from one single tree. And as you can see, the Paragon points that I'm spending right here, I have a ton of them. I was able to almost completely upgrade and fill out all of the Paragon trees. I think I was short by approximately one tree. Unlocking all of the abilities that we had right there, or all of the skills as they're calling them, and then we were able to choose and put into place what we wanted. The ability here was, was pretty easy. Notice I'm switching from one Paragon tree to the next right now, and I eventually figured out that we could then drop additional skills into the left-hand side for the trees that we happen to be using. And as you can see, there are many different ones that we're gonna actually go through right now. Now, just to name these Paragon trees to give you an idea, Frenzy of Battle, Soul of Conquest, Grind Expedition, Invincibility, Stringed Mystery, and Winged Movement, which I don't believe that one was activated yet. Remember, they did say that you have five trees now. Now, keep in mind, these are gonna be upgraded and more will be added over time. And as more of these are added, we're gonna be able to be progressing in Paragon level. But instead of having 15 trees, we'll have six or seven, making a little bit more uh, doable and realistic for players to be able to maintain and utilize than it currently is now. Plus it's less to keep up with in all reality. Now here are just a couple of the builds that were being featured inside of the game that, you know, they're build one, build two, and build three, recommending that you put this build together so that you could use them. Some skills, some gear, and of course the legendary gems. That's build number one. Build number two, and it was a placeholder of Blood Knight footage when we played of what's actually going to be in here. So the demonstration was not actually the build. And build number three. Of course, we were able to go to the barber shop as well and play around a little bit with the character class to see what you would want it to look like. This isn't the biggest feature for me inside of the game. I'm not the biggest fan of customizing my look. I just like to play the game. But I wanted to give you guys a little example of what things could look like potentially for you if you want to run around with your helmet off and see what your character actually looks like. And as you can see a little bit deeper into the play session, I realized that we could activate multiple nodes or multiple skills from our build. So it's gonna be on us to figure out which are the best combinations from the trees to actually put into play so that we're getting those attributes and how can we make our builds the strongest utilizing the new Paragon system. And at one point I wanted to see what kind of damage my class could do. What type of damage was this new Tempest class with an un 
modified build. I just put something basic together. I didn't spend the entire play session trying to put together the best build for the class, but I did put some skills together that I enjoyed, and I wanted to test it out to see what kind of damage we can do. And to be honest with you, with the build as I had it set, it was not as much damage as I was getting out of something like my current Crusader build, or especially for someone that could throw out a Necromancer build and drop insane amounts of DPS. But as you could see, you could check out the kind of damage that was being done over these 60 second tests. Here's the ultimate as well being used. Notice it's the dash skill, diving right through, cutting back and forth against the dummy, which is the same way that it's gonna interact inside of the game as well when you activate your ultimate. But we're about at 60 seconds. That is the breakdown right there, 25 million damage, which is about 500,000 damage per second, which is less than we've seen from some other classes. I even played some Fractured Plane as the Tempest as well, just to mess around with some different skill combinations. And I have to say it was a lot of fun. And upon launch of the class, we will have that game mode with the Tempest. So you could test it out, whether you want to test it with the Fractured Plane, or just do a class change, which I would always recommend you do. Overall, I really did enjoy the class. I'm gonna be playing it on launch for at least one month's time to put together a bunch of builds and to give this Tempest class a fair shot to really see how much I enjoy it. It was a lot of fun to head out there and to be able to test this out with my fellow creators and Diablo Immortal partners, and to meet with the team of everyone over there from Blizzard to present us with this brand new class. I wanna remind you guys that I will be live streaming today, showing you everything that I have on the new Tempest class and on the new Paragon system. I hope to see all of you over there. Make sure you set your alerts and hopefully if you enjoyed the video, you decide to subscribe so you don't miss out on my videos every single day.